In the previous lecture, we have discussed processing every character in a string. And for that, we made use of the range for statement. Now, in this lecture, we will discuss processing some characters in a string. Now, there may be cases when we simply want to access just one character or a few characters. Like for example, we might want to access characters up until a certain condition is met. So, in those cases, we want to have some process that helps us to just work with some characters in a string. For example, let's say that we want to capitalize just the first character in a string. We see we have this string hello, which is initially all in lowercase. And let's say that we would like to convert it like this. That is, just the first character has to be converted to uppercase and the rest we want to leave it as it is. We see that we want to just process one character in this string. And similarly, we could capitalize just the first word in a string. For example, we have the string hello there, which are all initially in lowercase form. Let's say that we would like to convert just the first word that is hello to uppercase. These are some use cases or examples where this process would be useful. Let's see how we can achieve this. To achieve this, we will use something known as a subscript, which is used to access individual characters in a string. The subscript operator, which is denoted like this, denotes the position of the character that we want to access. And it returns a reference to the character at the given position. Now, the subscript operator, that will help us to point to a character at a certain position in a string. And when we do so, it returns the reference to the character. This is very important. If we are modifying that, then it is actually the value at the reference that gets modified. And because of that, it is going to modify the original string. So keep that in mind that it is going to return the reference to the character. Now, subscript for a string, it starts at zero and it ends at size minus one. This is how it is indexed. Whenever we are making use of the subscript operator, just remember that for every string, the indexing would start at zero. For example, this string H-E-L-L-O has five characters and then the first character would be zero, then one, two, three, four. That's why we say it starts at zero and ends at size minus one. Here we know that size is five because it has five characters, but the ending index would be size minus one. For example, here size is five. So size minus one is five minus one. 4, which is the ending index. We have to make sure that the values we use to subscript a string must be greater than or equal to 0 and it should always be less than the size of that string. If you try to access something which is beyond this range, then it would throw an error. Be very careful when you are accessing this. Keeping this in mind, let's take a few examples to understand this better. Here in the first example, let's say that we would like to print only the first character of a string. We have a string here called readme, which holds the literal hello there. And then here in this if condition, we are just checking if the string is not empty. We want to make sure that the string contains at least something before we proceed. So we use the empty function, which we have already discussed in a previous lecture. And we know that this is used to check whether a string is empty or not. If a string is empty, then it would return one and it would return zero if it is not empty. So readme.empty would return zero if the string is not empty and the not of that would return one, which will make the if condition true. And here in the if condition, we come to the most important part. Here we make use of the subscript and we write here readme of zero. Within these braces, we write zero. Now what we mean by this is we are trying to access the first character in the string. So we index it to zero and we are just printing it out and it is supposed to print just the first character in the string, which is H. So let's run this program in Visual Studio Code and see if it is working as suspected. Here is a complete program. The name of the program is sts underscore ex1.cpp. Let me run it. So as I compile and run this program, you can see it prints H, which is the first character in the string. So it is working as expected. Okay, now let's take one more example here. Here we would like to capitalize the first letter of a string. We have a string here called readme, which holds the literal hello there. And we see all the characters are in lowercase form. And here again, in this if condition, we are just making sure that the string is not empty. Next, we come to this line where we are saying readme of zero. That means we are accessing the first character of this string, which is h. And then we are making use of the to upper function, which we have already discussed in a previous lecture, which is used to convert a character from lowercase to uppercase. To this to upper function, we are passing the first character of the string that is readme of zero. 
Now it would be converted to uppercase and it is assigned back to readme of 0. That means it is converted to uppercase and it is updated in the original one. So as we already said, since the subscript operator returns the reference to the string, this assignment would actually modify the original string. And then we are just printing it out. Okay, let's see if this is working properly by running it. Here is a complete program. It is called sts underscore ex2.cpp. Let me compile and run this. You can see the output here prints hello there and we can see that the first character h is converted to uppercase. So our original string was hello there with all lowercase and here h is in uppercase. That means our program worked correctly like we expected. Now coming to the third example, here let's say we would like to capitalize the entire first word of a string. We have a string called readme again which has hello there and we want to capitalize the entire word hello. Okay. For that, we are going to make use of a variable called i, which will be used to iterate over each of the characters. Because here we want to work on multiple characters, so we would need to iterate over them. For that, I will use this variable i. And if you see here, we are making use of the decal type, which we already discussed in a previous lecture. Decal type is used to specify the type of a variable. And what does it do here? Here you see inside the decal types parenthesis, we have readme.size. What it means is that it would check if this readme.size function was called and if it is called, what is the type that it would return and that same type would be assigned to this variable i. So i has the same type that would be returned if readme.size was executed. Now here we have a for loop in order to iterate over the strings. As I already said, i will be used as an iterator. So i is equal to 0, we have the initial assignment and then here we have a condition for the for loop. This for loop looks a little big, but it's very simple. We'll break it down. The condition is i not equal to readme dot size and e space of readme not. Now what this means is that we would like to run this loop as long as i is not equal to the size of this string. So we want to run the loop as many times as the size of this string. And also we would like to check if it is encountering a space because we want to just capitalize the entire first word. So if you encounter a space, that means we have reached the end of the first word and we need to stop there. So we are checking e space readme of i. e space would return true if it encounters a space. Now we are checking if it is not a space. Only if these two condition holds simultaneously, then the loop would run. Okay, and then here we are incrementing the value of i. And in the statement of the loop, we are saying readme of i equal to two upper readme of i. That means we are just converting that particular character at that particular index to the uppercase form. Now let's see. Initially, i would be zero and it would check is zero not equal to readme dot size. What would be the size here? Here the size of this string would be 11 because it has 11 characters including the space. i is not equal to readme.size, that is true. And readme.i is not a space, so that is also true. Now in that condition, it would come to this line and convert this h to uppercase. In the next iteration, i would be incremented and the value of i would now be 1. So it is going to check on this letter e. So it will again check if i is not equal to readme.size, that is true. And also it is not a space. So again, this letter would be converted to uppercase. Now similarly, it would go on like that. And when it encounters this space here, this condition would become false and hence it would break from the loop and then it would just print the entire string in the converted form. All right, so let's just run this program and see if it is working as expected. Here is the complete program. It's called sts underscore ex3.cpp. Let me compile and run it. Now, as you can see, the first word in this string that is hello, got converted to all uppercase and then the second string or the second word it remains as it is all right so it is working as we expected it to work okay now in this fourth and the last example here we will discuss about a random access so far we have seen how to access the first character or the first word of a string let's say we want to have some random access and the problem here is we would like to generate a hexadecimal representation of a given valid input. So we would like to take a decimal input from the user and we would like to convert it to the hexadecimal format. So let's see how to do that. 
Here we are declaring a string called hex digits and then it is of a constant type because this is something that we would not like to change and we are storing all the possible hexadecimal digits here starting from 0 till 9 and then we know that 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and 15 are represented by A, B, C, D, E, F respectively in hexadecimal format. So this string contains the possible hexadecimal digits and then we are giving a display here using the cout statement saying enter a string of 0 to 15 numbers separated by spaces and when you are done press enter. Then here we are declaring a string called result which is used for holding the resulting hexadecimal string. Next we have a variable called ip which would be used for holding the numbers from the input that the user supplies. We want this ip to be of the same type as the size type. So that's why we are declaring it like this. So ip would have the same type as size type and then here we are having a while loop where we are going to accept the input from the user. So this while condition would run as long as the user supplies input and it is stored into the variable called ip. Here we are having an if condition to check if the user is entering some invalid input. We know that the input should be somewhere between 0 and 15. So the value that the user enters, that means a decimal value should be between 0 and 15. It should not be greater than 15. So if the user enters a value greater than 15, then this if condition would become false and it would not execute the remaining statement here. Okay, so we check if the input is valid and if it is valid, then we say result plus equal to hex digits of ip. Now what this means is that result equal to result plus hex digit of ip. What is result? Result is used for storing the resulting hexadecimal string and if you say result equal to result plus hex digits of ip, we are actually talking about concatenating of the strings. So initially result has nothing in it and suppose a user enters let's say the value 10. Now it would check for hex digit of ip, ip would be 10. So it would count from here 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 which is a. So the value a would be stored in result. And then if the user enters the next value as 1, then it would check for the first index which will be 0, 1, that is 1 itself. That 1 would be concatenated with the previous result that we had which was a. So a1. And then it would go on like that until the user press enter to end the string. And then here we have a cout statement to print the result. Okay, let's run this program in Visual Studio Code and see it's working. Here is a complete program. It is called sts underscore ex4.cpp. Let me compile and run it. Okay, so it says enter a string of 0 to 15 numbers separated by spaces. When finished, press enter. Here I enter the numbers 12, 10, 15, 14 separated by spaces and I hit enter and let me break from this. Here it says your hex number is CAFE. Now how did this work? When I entered 12, it looked for the 12th index in this string over here and the 12th index was C. So C was stored in result and then the next I entered was 10. The 10th index is A, so A was concatenated to C, so it becomes C A and then 15 was F and 14 was E. So that also got concatenated and we have the final result C A F E which is the resultant hexadecimal format for this decimal numbers that we entered. This example was for randomly accessing characters in a particular string using the subscript operator. That was all about processing some characters in a string and we saw that the subscript operator is what we made use of in order to achieve this. So I hope this lecture was clear to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.